Listen. Put on your red dress and slip on your high heels in some of that sweet perfume. It sure smells good on you. Slide on your lipstick and let all your hair down. Cause baby, when you get through, I'm going to show for you. Tonight will be a special night. No matter where we go. And I'm so proud to be with you. I just want to let you know you got me saying my, 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 you sure look good tonight. And you're so damn fine. I want to say my, 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 my. You sure sure look look good good tonight. tonight. After all this time, slip on your nightgown. Step in our bedroom. First, I want to take some time. I just want to look at you. Girl, you are so So fine. fine. I can't believe my eyes and all that I want to do. I want to make love to you. Tonight will be a special night. A minute more to come. And I'm so proud to be with you. So proud to show you love. You sure look good. My, 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 Make my, love my, my, tonight alone. My, 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 Make my, my, love to the you earth sure of dawn. Oh, come on, oh, come on. Let's start the Sweet show. Sweet little thing, yes you do. <laughs> Short Disc Podcast. This is episode 133, and I wonder why John and Dwayne has done this to me. <laughs> we are your hosts today. <laughs> we are your hosts today. The first lady of the podcast, Steph, and myself, Keith, we are missing two in action. They decided that they had better things to do with their life. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dwayne had to be a daddy, and John had to get over this cold. They just flew our little podcast today. Right, right. So it's me and Steph in here today. We're going to be in your ears for your listening pleasures. Steph, how you feeling today? feel good but anxious uh surgery is a week away so and for the people that you know don't recall can you please give us a recap of what you have scheduled for next week Uh, my lumpectomy so my tumor that i have um the cancerous tumor in my breast they're removing it next tuesday i'm sorry all right Um, So we're just asking that everybody collectively on Monday evening, just stop what you're doing wherever you are at 519 p.m. Send Mm -hmm. up a quick prayer, positive word, love and light. I prefer prayer over love and light. But, you know, what is love and light? That's what I'm saying. I know some of y'all don't pray. I don't know what love and light is. But I I would prefer the prayers not to be. I know what love is, but what does light do for you? I don't know. You know, some people could be out here praying to SpongeBob too. So it's like you have to be selective who you ask to pray for you. Yes, that's what I was going to say to you too. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to be selective at times 
with who you asked to pray for you because mm-hmm. you don't know who they're praying to or what they're praying about. You know, so I'm going to ask that all the prayer warriors just come together for Steph that she has a speedy and successful surgery, as I know she will. God's will be done. Amen. 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 How you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. It's been a very busy, busy couple of weeks for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I... It is what it is. You know, time is moving so fast. We're almost at the end of the year now. So I'm just, you know, just enjoying it and taking it all in. So I want to give a shout out to everyone that is listening to us. Really appreciate you guys supporting us, um, being there for us. Listen, let me say this. I'm all for you know, when you have a business, when you're doing something, I'm all about, you know, promoting. I'm all about, you know, bigging up your business, telling people about it. Listen, when I travel, when I go places, I'm constantly telling people about the Short Desk Podcast. Listen to the Short Desk mm-hmm. Podcast. Download on this now because this is our business. So I'm very proud of it. Right. As you should be with anything that you do. But I think it's in bad taste when someone's celebrating something and Mm. you go on that person's maybe uh, celebratory post or message or maybe you send them a message and you are promoting your business while that person is celebrating something, a milestone. I don't think that's an appropriate time to do that. Other, any other time, listen, I'm all for it because that's your business, as you should. You should be out promoting. You should be out trying to garner new eyes, ears, money, whatever it is. But there's a time and a place for that. Mm. There's a time and a place. Did so, you address it? Well, I didn't have to because... When you and John and everybody else came on there, it was silence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it was more, I think there was embarrassment at that point. Because I know I told him about himself when he did that on my birthday. Yeah. And I I, I think it's embarrassment. And I I knew it was going to lead to that. That's why I didn't have to say much. But what I said on there and I knew that others would see it, you know, um, and it's already embarrassing enough because you sound like you underwater. I'm not gonna go all there with that. I am. What I what I will say is that there's a time and a place for everything. And and I'm a big believer in promoting your things. You know what I mean? I, I try to promote my podcast as much as possible. Um Steph tries to promote the podcast as much as possible. You know, John, Dwayne, we all try to promote our podcast as much as possible, but there's a time and a place. Speaking of promoting something, Steph, please uh, give your sister a shout out and promotion of her business and when they can catch her on live. My sister, Malaysia, is a paparazzi consultant. Um, for those of you who don't know paparazzi, where you can get your bling bling jewelry. Um Her Facebook business page is Dare to Dazzle with Frenchie. And you can catch her on Facebook Live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock p.m. I'd also like to shout out my niece. Um, My niece, Quanisha, we call her Chrissy. She has her own um, nail business. She's a nail tech. She has her own nail business. Um, You can find her on Facebook at Lady K Nails. And not only does she... Um, do nails. She's a a mobile nail tech. Not only does she do nails, um, Chrissy has created her own brand, her own line of nail polish, um, sugar scrub, body butter, cuticle oil, lashes. um, And these are things she makes herself in her kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can find her again, Lady K Nails on um, Facebook. So, All right. That is cool. And then also my mother is on Facebook on her personal page, Antoinette Johnson. You can find her 
every Thursday going live at 720. Um, just going to the Bling Bling Blue Room. That is mm-hmm. her name on Facebook, Antoinette Johnson. She goes live as she sells all the different excel- accessories, jewelry, dresses, shirts, hats, you name it. She has it. So check her out every Thursday at 730 p.m. Eastern. I'm sorry, 720 Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, Antoinette Johnson. I love it when she says, come on in with your blinging self. I love it. I love it. I don't know why that amps me up so much. (laughs) Speaking of shout outs, I want to give a shout out to the young man that felt the need to send Steph a nice little text message over the weekend. And it reads as follows. And this was addressed to Steph. Mm -hmm. And I got Steph's permission to read this. So I'm going to be honest. And you may block me after this, but I'm not listening to the show anymore. Talking about the show that you all are listening to right now. Rather, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Talking about the show this podcast. The reason is you. Steph, I think you're completely delusional in your thinking. Men don't value you because you bring nothing of worth to the table. (laughs) You're old now. This nigga called me old. You're not an attractive woman, as I've tried to tell you before. Keith allows you to say whatever, and he pretends to agree to stop your whining. John is irritated by you, and it shows in his tone and responses. (laughs) New dude tolerates you. Once they realize you are not an asset to the show and let you go, I'll listen again. And Steph's response to that was, you're right about one thing. I am blocking you. Outside of that, I have zero response to your foolishness. Well, I'm going to respond to it now. Let's go ahead and dig into this real quick, and then we're going to move on to more important things. Because I know he's listening. Absolutely. That's and the I'm, first thing. And I'm going to say this to him um, because the devil is an MF and liar. Okay. Um, because on my worst day, I'm still a better chick than your chick on her best day. Let's start there. First of all, when you want to talk about me not being attractive. Second of all, this is a response to you texting me, trying to get at me and me rejecting your advances. Because I remember mm. your teeth were every which way but right, and you couldn't control your acne. And now because you got a little proactive in some braces, you think it's okay. Wow. Not the proactive. Because <laughs> let me tell you something, sir. <sighs> I am one of one. I am number one. I am the only one. Sir. This may be the time for you to turn off the podcast. So I, I really, I really try to remain humble. I do, and I let a lot of stuff slide with people. I do, but I'm tired of people thinking that I'm just gonna lay down and take their stuff because I literally won't give him any of my stuff. Because let's be honest, that's what the problem is here. Mm. The problem is when you're laying down with your woman, you're thinking about me and I won't give you the time of day. So you figure that you can attack my looks and talk about me. And before my family and friends get upset, please understand that I'm not upset because you have to understand I'm considering the source. And the source is weak. The source is tired. The source is broke. The source could not pull me with Denzel Washington's money. So, mm. you know. So my thing is this, Steph. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. You're not an attractive woman, as I've tried to tell you before. Like <laughs> uh, This dude told me I wasn't pretty enough to live in Atlanta. So what do you get as a man? And, and, and mm-hmm. I'm going to ask this question. Like, you know, there's other people on the show with us. So y'all list this where you could dial in, but you can't. But. As a man, what the hell do you get out of telling a woman that she's not attractive, right? Uh, as a grown man, we're not kids anymore. Now, when we were kids, yeah, we could sit there and talk about you being ugly, fat, too skinny, ashy, whatever it is, right? We could do that because we were kids. We didn't know no better. So that's how we, we you know, we joked on folks, we, we, you know, but as a grown man, you know, even if an ugly woman came to me, I'm not going to sit there and just tell, nah, you ugly, baby. 
I'm just not attracted to you. Maybe that may be it or something. But, uh, you know, what grown man does that? A butt hurt one. So let me say this. I've said this before, you know, and I'm not going to go over this for 10, 15 minutes. None of that. If you don't like the show, if you don't like this iteration of the show, I invite you not to listen because I would not want you to put yourself through such torture that one of our voices is so annoying that you cannot deal with us or you just cannot deal with the dynamic of the show. I implore you to just turn, you know, just, hey, stop following. Take away your downloads. Take away your follows. I will say this. This show has never been more successful before we added Steph. This show has risen even higher since we added Dwayne. That is a fact. I don't sit there, you know, in the earlier stages of the show, I used to post with our numbers and how we did for the month and, you know, how we're doing and all that other stuff. I haven't done that in a while. And I don't need to because we keep breaking records for listens. We keep get an abundance of love with listens and downloads. I don't need to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So if you feel that you can't listen because she's not attractive. <laughs> she's old now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I guess we're not supposed to age. <laughs> um, she brings nothing of worth to the table. What table is she bringing it to? If you got a girlfriend, you shouldn't even worry about what she's bringing to a table. You need to worry about your own table. And may I say uh, this? I don't have to uh, bring anything to the table because I am the table. All right. Wow, that's a uh, wrestling thing. I watched this Botchamania show. <laughs> it is just, I am the table. I am I'm sorry. The table. You, you bring something here. Uh, Keith allows you to say, first of all, I don't allow anything. Um, she has the right as a grown, or in your words, an old woman <laughs> to say what she wants to say on this show because this is her show as well. And I don't agree. There's been plenty of times where Steph and I have disagreed mm-hmm. on the show. If you listen attentively instead of daydreaming about being inside her pants, you probably wouldn't have been able to hear the times that Steph and I have disagreed, but you can't because you fantasize about her every day. Um, and, and I've never seen or heard of Steph whining. Matter of fact, when she talked about some of the hardest things that she's dealt with, I couldn't even tell if she was crying or not, but that's neither here nor there. I'll just say this to you. Um, they realize you're not an asset to the show. no, I've realized that listeners like you are not an asset to the show. I know you're not going to stop listening. I know you're hearing this because you have shown yourself to be obsessive and delusional. And that's okay. But you as a man, as a grown man, and I would probably say old man, because if you know Steph, that means you old too, since you call her old. Oh, he's you to. Oh, okay. So you almost a senior citizen. You need to step back. <laughs> Hey, you need to do a self-evaluation, bro. You're 50 years old sending this to a woman. Get a life. Uh, but that was hilarious when it Steph was. sent that to me. Um, no, it was not hilarious to you because you went off. Well, you yes. went off. Yeah, yeah. And In I, the moment, know, I, I did. I started to read it live while we were recording, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought about it. Mm-mm, no stuff. <laughs> I'm, this thing, I'm, ahead of time. And I'm glad I did because your your response today was so PG. Yesterday, not so much. Yeah, it wasn't PG, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. It's all you good. couldn't even get it out. You said who? 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 I said, oh <laughs> lord. <laughs> yeah, you know it's just like man, come on, bro. It's just crazy. <laughs> now, um, just to give you guys an update. Because John and Dwayne aren't here, you know, next week it may be a little different, too, because we've got travel going on. We're going to still put out an episode, but it may be a two person crew next week. It may not be a two person. crew. Who knows? But we're going to put out the show constantly as much as we can. Uh, We're not going to do the top 10 and the movie review this week because it was John's pick. 
And so we want to afford John the, 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 the chance to be on the show to go over what he picked. So once he's back uh, feeling better, then we will do the movie, the show review, which was BS High on Max and the top 10, which was most ignorant names. And so after that, it'll be my choice for the top 10 in movies and then we'll go from there. So we're not going to do that this week, but guess what? We got an entertaining show. We're already off to a hot, hot start. <laughs> Steph, can you please tell the people what city we're celebrating this week for downloading the Short Desk Podcast? We are celebrating Spanish Town, Jamaica. Whoa. Yes. With a population of 145,018 people. Notable people from Spanish Town. We got a whole list. Um, hmm. Olympic medalist Johan Blake. I used to have such a crush on him. Oh my Johan God. Blake. What yeah, does he do? He uh, uh track and fields. Oh, okay. He was hot the same time that um that uh what you call it was. Oh gosh, his name just escapes me. Oh, you saying boat? Yes. And I, they, the two of them, it was, it was two of them repping Jamaica, and I loved Johan Blake until he started growing his nails out really long. Oh wow! Okay. Um, DJ Academics was born in Spanish Town, Jamaica. Black woman hating DJ Academics. Um, wow. Entertainer Grace Jones, singer Diana King, and Spice, who was a victim of Erica Mena's racist remarks, is also. Mm. Spanish Town, Jamaica. So thank you, Spanish Town. We love And Bishop Noel Jones, who is the brother of Grace Jones. Yes. B- yes. Bishop Noel Jones has been on Preachers of LA and got Have a couple seen- of babies and women out there. You said right? a couple of babies. Have you seen Grace of Lately? Have I seen who? Grace Jones of Lately. No, I haven't. She still looks really good. Really, really. Yes. I imagine so. She probably looks probably the same. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Spanish Town. Wow. Thank that's y'all. that's great. We I are worldwide. Yeah, know. you know. So there's been a thing, man, and I I hate to have this conversation without Rock, and I'm not going to have it all the way because I like to have Rock on. But mm-hmm. there's there's you know conversations that we've had um, back and forth, and there's a lot of um, for Black Americans, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes credit gets taken away from us with certain things. And a big topic of discussion with that has been hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people are trying to say that it was originated from Caribbean blacks. And that's been a hot topic of discussion. And sometimes uh, not even Caribbean blacks. I even heard Puerto Ricans too thrown into the mix, you know? So rock and I have a very, good uh, conversation about that. And, you know, he'll point some things out to me. Some people I didn't even know were Caribbean and stuff like that. So I found out about DJ academics, I think through rock, if I'm not mistaken. So um, that's that he was Caribbean. Um, But that's a topic for another day, but it's, it's, it's just amazing to me how, when I hear those things and hear about those things and it's like, okay, now I I don't, I don't know about all that, but you know, Hey, it is what it is, Mm -hmm. but that that's just some things that, you know, Rock is always able to point out to me and let me know what's going on. Mm-hmm. But speaking of things that are going on, we've had a couple of. So one thing that I don't like to do, I'll tell you guys, is I don't like talking about celebrity just dying as much. You know, I know in earlier episodes that I would sometimes say, you know, RP and whatever. But. It's always posted so much, you know what I mean? That it's like, okay, I'm just adding on to it. And then it just kind of brings down the energy, you know what I mean, of the show. But these people should be celebrated. I will say that, you know, whenever a celebrity passes away, it's always a shock, you know what I mean? Unless, you know, you get word that they're in their final days or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's always a shock. And I'll say that, when I found out last night, uh, Irish Grimstead from the R and B group Seven Hundred Two, yeah, passed away at the age of forty three. Mm-hmm. That was very shocking to me um, because we we had just lost Magoo yeah. from Timberland and Magoo, you know, a month ago, 
And then I'm sure we lost somebody else. Pee Wee Herman's passed away. But she's been sick uh, for a really long time. So I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I saw when they uh, when the group announced this was back like before Christmas mm-hmm. when they announced her being sick, and I'm just wondering like they're being really hush hush about what's going on. Because you know her twin died from kidney disease. Right. Maybe that was the same thing. Yeah. So it's it's just really sad. Yeah, her twin died back in what 2008, mm-hmm. I believe. So very sad. And and I was going through the Instagram posts and everything, and I saw that she really hadn't been performing with them for a while. So, mm-hmm. you know, but she passed away last night. Shocking, sad, you know, all of those things. Beautiful um, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very beautiful. I love 702 as a teenager and Mm-hmm. Um, everybody who knows me knows I love that beat me nine one one. So oh yeah, that's the jam. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> they made that song hot too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But um, also in other news, there's been a couple of uh, divorce announcements going on. We've had uh, an announcement of Jeezy, the rapper, divorcing. He filed for divorce. From his wife of two years, Jenny, is it Jenny Ma or Jenny May? I think it's my. My, okay. From the, she was on the, the TV show The Talk for a while there. The Real. The Real, my God. See, I got them all mixed up. You all right. You so. I feel about her. Yeah, so I I didn't know, right? So I, I and mm-hmm. you know, I, I saw that you were saying this stuff and everybody, so I wasn't really up to date on her. Mm-hmm. And I know I even mentioned it to my wife and she was like, oh, I don't care for her. I still didn't really know what, you know, what was going on when I mentioned about the divorce and stuff. So some years ago, apparently, what did she say, Steph? OK, she said a few problematic things because I used to watch The Real. The very first time she said something. And let me put this disclaimer out here real quick, because black men. And a few of them have said it to me this past weekend because I said, now I can listen to Jesus music again. You know, you black women always hate when a black man marries outside of the race. This is not it. This is a situation where this woman said some horrible things about black men. And as a black woman who wanted to protect her kings. I'm like, she needs to be left alone right where she is. But first of all, there were times when they would have conversations about black men and she would throw the word thug around a lot. Mm. Um, That's a sore spot with me. Um, I don't like that because sometimes even if you have a black man in corporate America in a suit every day, somebody's still going to call him a thug just because he's a black man. Okay, Mm -hmm. I just didn't appreciate that coming out of her Asian mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all, she, there was an interview where she was talking and she was still married to her white husband at the time. And what she said was she prefers white meat. She likes her dark meat on the side. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw. Black men. Yes. That's what I saw. Um, and like I said, it's always something, she would always say something problematic. Then it became, you know, she never wanted children. But then she divorced her white husband, married this black man, and whoop, had a baby. Now, there were some rumors going around at one time saying she wanted a mixed child. I don't know how true that could be, but it sounds like it would be right in line with her brand. Um, But even though nothing has been reported, the word on the street is that she cheated. Now, I don't know how true that could be, but if that is the case, I won't be surprised. Yeah, I heard about that, and it was with uh, A.C. Slater, Mario Lopez. I call him A.C. Slater. Really? Yeah. So, apparently... So... (laughs) So, apparently, the rumor is that... Well, first of all, Jeezy, when he filed, they said that they had been... um, separated for living separately for a while Mm -hmm. now i don't know how true that is because jenny i went on her instagram and she had been posting about you know uh his book that had came out she just posted a week ago and made a nice heartfelt long post about her husband 
Now, you know my nosy stuff. I went to his IG, and he mm-hmm. hadn't posted anything about her since May. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, hmm. I woke up Saturday morning, and I see somebody post, not A.C. Slater, Jenny. And I'm like, what? Hmm. So, I went and looked. Apparently, the by his TV name. <laughs> That's what I call him. Black people, I want y'all to stop. These people have real names. AC Slater, baby. That's who he is to me. Lord. From, from Saved by the Bell. Holla they at your boy. Dustin Diamond Screech until the mm-hmm. day he left here. So enough. Listen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Are you off. They said <laughs> some snap mix from Trader Joe. Let me tell you something. <laughs> They said that apparently Jeezy caught her sexting. That means for, for for the older people that listen to the show, that means texting sexual things with another person. They call Is it sexting. That what that means? He I've called never it, heard of that before. My well, you are considered child. older. Yeah, my innocent ears, child. Uh, according to that BAN that had um, sent you that text, you old. Yeah. Um, he got caught sexing. I mean, she got caught sexting Mario Lopez. And that's why he divorced her. Now, that's the rumor. It ain't been confirmed, but I did see a video. I guess he does, what is it called? Access or Hollywood Access or something. Uh-huh. And she was on the show and he got very familiar with her. Ooh, like a little bit video. too familiar. I'm going to send it to you. I saw it on Twitter. Thank you. But. That was that. And then, Steph, go ahead and tell us about the other uh, announcement. Well, I don't even know if they said it's final for divorce. They just separated us. Separated. Tiana Taylor. I kind of figured that something was going on with them back here early in the summer um, when it was Met Gala time and people were asking where he was, where he was, and she completely skipped the question. <laughs> and then he did College Hill. So this is a thing for me. I've never been married, but as a single woman, one thing I do is I watch women, I watch men very carefully. The single, the married, all of them. It is very weird to me when you have a married man that's in any type of space and he never brings his wife up. Mm. What do you mean by that? Iman Shumpert was on College Hill, a celebrity Mm. edition, and nothing about his wife ever came out of his mouth. Oh, wow. Nothing. If if I'm somewhere with a married man, right, it's it's a bunch of us in a setting. And mm-hmm. let's say we're sitting around for about four hours. I'm just throwing a, a time period out here. And he never mentions his wife. I raise an eyebrow. Mm. And I say that because not to say that he has to just sit and talk about his wife, talk about his wife, talk about his wife. But... That's strange to me because men that love their wives, even sometimes the girlfriends and stuff like that, I can't ever recall you and I having a conversation on the phone, Keith, and Iris's name did not come out of your mouth. Mm. It's not going to happen. Right. You know why? Because Mm. you're a happily married man. Mm -hmm. There's no trouble in the water. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know what I'm saying? So... I have um, a friend, and I remember he was going through some some marital issues, and we didn't know. But I I told another mutual friend of ours, I said, something's going on. And she said, why? I said, the last three conversations I had with him, his wife's name didn't come out of his mouth at all. Mm. I'm not talking about a quick, hey, how you doing? I'm talking about if there is a conversation of at least 15 minutes or more, that man is going to bring his wife up. Iman Shumper hadn't brought his wife up in months. Wow. They would always take post pictures on social media all over each other. You weren't seeing that of lately. It's just been her and the kids. Right. Um, right. so that's how I knew there was some trouble in paradise, but, um, things I've been hearing about them, it's like, it's what no, you've been hearing Steph? Tell us. I heard they like to have company in their bedroom. Oh, another T.I. and Tiny deal. That's never, that never works out well for anybody. 
famous or not, because you have a lot of y'all uh, plain Jane folk out here trying to imitate what these uh, what these celebrity folks do, not and you wonder Jane. why your relationships are in trouble. <laughs> Would you say? Not not plain Jane. Plain Jane folks, yeah. And mm. then you try to imitate what these celebrities do because my thing is, as far as any man, if you feel the need, sir, to think we need to invite somebody in our bedroom, then I'm not the woman for you. Right, right. And then men want to holler, uh, black men, let me say this too. Mm-mm, don't you try to come for just black men. I No, I'm going to say this too because I see a lot more of them saying this than black women. Go ahead. Stop trying to say just because you don't want to settle with one woman or stay with a one wife and do this, that polygamy is the answer. And most of the men that I see saying that have no idea what polygamy entails. Are most of these men single? Mm, divorced. Some of them are divorced. Okay. Because I don't know any man in their right mind that want <laughs> more than one woman at a time. A lot of them are, well, Keith, you know, a lot of these men that are saying things like this are very immature, too. Understood. But I mean, very it's just, immature. listen, it's just, y'all just a bit too much for me. Mm-hmm. I can only take one at a time. Um, And I said this the other day, and uh, Keith kind of got on my case when I said it, he and, and our friend Jasmine both. Because I'm like, I'm at the stage right now where things are so crazy, and you're hearing this, these divorces and separations, and this person's doing that, like, I don't want to be bothered. Right. I want to stay single. Like, I'm okay over here. Uh, well, let me say this. <clears throat> You're absolutely right in what you were saying earlier. You cannot invite people. That is that is You're inviting trouble. Mm-hmm. I can't tell people how to go about their marriage, how they should do things. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what works for you, I guess. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you need to use wisdom. And when you're inviting somebody into your bedroom with your spouse, you open up all types of doors because now you're saying, okay, it's okay. That spouse is not going to hear, oh, it's okay only if I'm here, Mm -hmm. only if I'm involved. And, and, And on the flip side of that, what you're telling me, if I'm on the other end, is that I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. You need more. The rumor mill is saying that she prefers women, so. Well, I mean, she she looked kind of hard. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Listen, she looked kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? I I can see that. I can see that. She looked very, very hard um, sometimes. You know, at... uh, this is the <laughs> point where if John was here, he'd be urging us to wrap this conversation up. <laughs> <laughs> and I would ignore not, him. Just right. like I would. Right on talking. <laughs> Keep right on talking. Listen, she looks very hard. So the fact of them saying that she probably prefers uh, women, I'm not surprised at that. I mean, hey, that, that seems like what she would do. But what I will say is this, that I think that you know what I mean? We have to be careful as folks that's in a relationship, folks that's married. When you invite certain people into your bedroom, your bedroom is sacred. And you're inviting these people into your bedroom. You're going to invite these different uh um, what do you call it? Different spirits mm-hmm. into your house. Okay. And that's not good. That's not good at all. You know what I'm saying? At all. And so, um, you know, I, I, my heart hurts for them cause they have kids and stuff like that, but you have to be careful mm-hmm. with what you're doing with your spouse. And I just feel like that, that just opened up a door and now, you know, they don't know how to get out of it. I mean, I mean, it's, it's already damaged. Shall I say? It's It's all fun and games until somebody has a little too much fun with the extra. There you go. There you go. So, you know, 
I even with the 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 uh the Jenny Ma and Jeezy, although you know she says some derogatory things for anybody that's married, I feel for them. You know what I'm saying? Like my heart hurts for them, especially with kids involved, because the goal is not to get married and then turn around and get divorced. Right. That shouldn't be the goal, you know, but when you hear about it and it's like, man, y'all, you know, I, I know you, you try to do everything that you can do, but I always encourage people and I'm no expert or nothing, mm-hmm. but make sure you know who you're marrying why you're marrying and that you do want to marry this person because this is supposed to be a lifelong commitment. This isn't a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. And you have yours over there. I have mine over there. No, we coming together as one under God. Mm -hmm. That means we're coming together. We're not separate. I can't sit up here, (coughs) excuse me, and say, all right, now we done did the deal. You going on home. Or I'm about to go home. No, I am home. You know what I'm saying? I can't sit here and say, oh, I'm about to so- make a make a, a, a solo decision. No. We have to make a decision together as a family. Because we're one. And so I think a lot of times people, you know, I don't think they really weigh out this decision. And And listen, I understand sometimes. You know, love can fizzle out. I've heard of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it happens. We're, we're human. You know, it's only human nature. But I just think you have to really sit back and think about these decisions that you make before you marry this person. Now, one thing I did see about Jenny Ma earlier regarding her and Jeezy, the rapper Jeezy, is that she was saying that she has a terrible temper and attitude problem. Yeah, and he was the first person to check her on that. Let me tell you some ladies. I'm talking to you as as a man, okay? A good man is taught never to hit a woman. Okay? We know that. But you cannot become disrespectful and belligerent talking to a man and think he's just going to sit down and cower in a corner. I'm not saying that he's going to hit you or anything because he has no right hitting you because you didn't put your hands on him, at least in this instance. But the makeup of any human being, especially a man, is not to tolerate somebody being disrespectful to them. So if you get in my face talking loud and crazy, Mm -hmm. you cannot expect for that man to just say, oh, that's her. (laughs) That's my wife. I love her. No, every person has their breaking point. And you can't just think, oh, that's my personality is cool. I'm going to tolerate it. No, that's BS. That's BS. And if Jeezy saw this beforehand, he should have seen right there. Listen, this is going to be a problem. I'm not going to be able to do this here. Mm -hmm. If. Iman saw that Tiana loves women. He should have said, you know what? This is probably going to be a problem here. Mm-hmm. The allure as a man, and I'm talking straightly to men. Oh, man, another woman in the bed? For real? The allure of that is just like, oh, my God, you know, that, that's that been a dream come true. But it hit different when you're married. Because now you've opened up that door you come home, there's another girl there. She tried to clean it up and say, oh, we were waiting for you. No, the hell you weren't. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that go into, you know, being married to someone. And, and whatever works for you will work for you. But you need to be careful about some of the things that you turn a blind eye to just for the sake of saying, Hey, I want to get married. And I hate that a lot of people will allow money to make them do stupid things. Yes. Because a lot of these people, y'all can't have, they would not be able to have these crazy rendezvous and bedrooms and stuff like that. If they didn't have money, this is the honest. That's right. 
So I hate that they allow money to, or they, they let money make them do dumb things like this. Celebrities are, are, are crazy that way. You know, they just have a lot of money and a lot of time on their hands. And, you know, a lot of things are, are different for celebrities and they get involved into a lot of these um, sometimes satanic, satanic, mm-hmm. you know, followings and, you know, the things that they do to get inside these doors. And I'm not saying that this is the case with Tiana and Iman, but you never know who's your friend and who's not. Tiana could have had somebody in her ear saying, girl, he ain't making no money as no basketball player no more. Yeah, he doing a little show or something, but you the money maker, you the star. He ain't nobody. And he he liked it the first time. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Just about every woman has that one friend that's going to be negative no matter what. Uh, hating. Listen. Ooh. Yeah, And it's it's imperative that when you get a good man, a solid man, you get rid of that friend. That's not your friend. Yeah, no. And, you know, I'm learning now. I use that word too loosely anyway. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you know you have a good man, he's doing right by you. He's taking care of you. If you have that hating ass friend, get rid of her. Let me tell you something. A friend will be honest and supportive and you will know where that friend is coming from. And, 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 and just like Steph just said, get rid of them. You reach a certain point in your life where you outgrow certain friendships. Some friends, friendships, I'm sorry, relationships are only there for a certain season in your life. Mm-hmm. Some are there for the full season of your life. Some are there just for a quarter. And you have to decipher and know, listen, this ain't for me. Now I'm journeying in a different direction. And it may not even be just a relationship wise a- mm-hmm. as far as being in a relationship. It could be, you know, your growth with God. Your your walk with God could be different. It could be uh, where you're trying to go professionally. You know, sometimes you outgrow. And that's okay. Because I can't be Ronald and still hanging with, you know, one buck on the, on the corner. You know what I'm saying? If I'm trying to provide for my family and I've entered the, the business world, I can't do the same things I was doing, you know, 10 years ago. And they're still doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so you have to have friends that are encouraging friends that are, you know, uh, loving, supportive. And when I say encouraging, loving, supportive, they support you, but they don't back your mess either. Mm-hmm. When you're wrong, you're wrong. When you're right, you're right. They're going to call you out on it. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? You may not like it, but who wants a yes person to be in their corner every time they're doing something incorrectly? And if you want that type of person in your corner, that speaks more of your character than anything else. And that's not a good thing. You don't want a friend. You want a yes person. Correct. So, you know, and and I'm and I'm not going to sit here and blame, especially with Tiana Taylor and Iman Shepard. And, and for some of you that don't know, Tiana Taylor, she's an artist. She's a she does everything. I mean, she she acts, she sings, she dances, she you know, she does all these things. Iman Shepard, he he was a former NBA player. He's in the TV show The Shy now. Um, you know, he does his little things. So just to give you guys a little background, because some people may be listening, who are these people? But mm-hmm. you can't sit there and just go, oh, look at the friends. Look at this. Listen, the friends, you know, regardless, I'm not going to put the blame on them. If they did play a part, that's not on them. That's on you. Right. That's in this relationship. That's on you. Because number one, you should not be that weak and feeble minded to allow any of your friends to change the trajectory of where your relationship is going. Unless you're in something that's very abusive. And when I say abusive, I'm not just talking physically. I'm talking about mentally, emotionally. You know, so. It's sad that 
these marriages and relationships don't continue on. I, I get sad when I hear about that. But what I will say also to that is that never stay in a predicament where you're unhappy. Absolutely. You cannot stay where you're unhappy. And if Jeezy, in the case of young Jeezy and Jenny May, or Ma, whatever, if he saw, even if it wasn't the sexting that she's allegedly doing, allegedly, mm-hmm. if he saw that this is not what he wanted for his life and this is not going to make him happy, then you got to walk away. Absolutely. But this is why I tell people premarital counseling is so important. It's not going to always, it's not going to solve everything. It's not because you can still get married and get divorced 10, 15, 20 years down the road, even after doing it. Right. (laughs) You know, but if you're going in, with open ears and open heart and open mind and open eyes that premarital counseling will bring forth some things that could really have an impact on where you want to go forward after premarital counseling. So I'm a bit, I'm a big advocate for that. Um, My wife and I, we are nowhere near perfect but we did premarital counseling because, Hey, we need to figure out, is there some stuff that my wife didn't know about me that she may not want to deal with? It may be some stuff that, you know, I had that she had, I don't want to deal with. And if there is some stuff, we'll be able to talk it out. We'll be able to, you know, come to something with this and understanding of, and know what marriage is and and what it details and, 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 and all the things that come along with it, because it ain't just love and sex. Mm-hmm. It's more than that. That love and sex ain't gonna pay the mortgage or the rent. Okay. <laughs> and and once you reach a certain age, you ain't having all that sex like that. Not every day. That way off soon. Mm-hmm. Not because you don't love each other any less, but you got responsibilities, you got kids, and you just be tired sometimes. Yeah. So, unfortunate, but just do better. Just do better. And, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's sad. And, and Jeezy, in both cases, they both have kids. You know what I'm saying? But if you are unhappy... Don't even let the kids get in your way of being unhappy because kids can pick up on you being unhappy in that house. They sure can. They can pick up on that. So, yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. But, uh. But I'm listening to Jesus' music again, (laughs) Travis. I was clapping or dying all weekend. (sighs) You know, Steph, that's just being petty, Betty. I know it. I know it. It's okay. I know it. I know it. I know it. Listen, um, one person. I want to talk about today to Steph and I, we hadn't talked about this, this gentleman in a long time. And, uh, that was, that's the, do we call him a celebrity chef? Mm, no, we call him a cook. Celebrity cook. No celebrity. Why are you putting that celebrity in front I of him? I say it? celebrity because he has celebrity people that follow him. He he's, he's known, Ugh. well-known cook. I'm sorry. Darius Williams, a.k.a. Darius Cooks, a.k.a. Darius Crooks. That's, you know, what people call him. We've we've had we've talked about him several times on the show. So he's still doing his dining with Darius things where he goes around the world and I mean, around the United States and he hosts these parties and. um, 
unlawfully at that, shall I say, he hosts these parties where he's cooking and everything because you have to get permits and license and everything to do this in every state and city. But he's, you know, beyond that. So anyways, recently he's been doing a thing um, and, and, and I don't know if this is because he's seen how it's taken off of others like the hungry black man and Keith Lee. They go to these restaurants. These are, you know, social media guys that, you know, are really a big part of the community, the black community. And they're going to these restaurants. They're trying the food. They're rating the food. And they're not. They're being honest, mm-hmm. but they're not bad mouthing. The restaurant and it's not coming from a place of uh what's the word I'm looking for? Malicious intent. Mm. There isn't any malicious intent when they give feedback and it may not be favorable, right? Even with Keith Lee, he'll still tell you to go check it out. Keith Lee, he's on TikTok, he's all over social media, he's taking the world by storm, he's really boosted a lot of businesses. With his reviews, people trust his taste buds and they go. Not everybody's taste buds are the same. Hungry Black Man, I've been following him for a very long time. He's a brother that's very much invested into his community. He actually has a restaurant down in Miami. Uh, I forgot what the name of it is. It's called Webster and something, but he has a restaurant down there in Miami. He's he's going to make, he's going to um, open up one in, I believe, Charlotte, North Carolina. And he's also going to open up one here in Orlando, Florida. Very much invested in his community. He goes around, he tries, he even hosts festivals and stuff. He gives honest to God feedback and recommendations. Well, Darius has started doing this. Mm. And if you have followed Darius, Darius uh, for years, if you're not one of the women that have uh, become mesmerized (laughs) um, by his charm, Mm. Darius doesn't always come across as someone that is uh, positive. He's a jerk. There you go. So, because you being all nice and stuff today, I don't have time. <laughs> so he's been doing, you know, he's been going around doing that, and he's been going to these cities, and of course, he's not giving always favorable reviews to people. You know, and you, you kind of look at it like this. Let, let me say this. Nothing wrong with you giving your own review, right? But as in the case with Keith Lee and a Hungry Black Man, when you have a big following, and in his case, his following are, those people are insane. I'm just going to say that. They, they, I, I always this may sound crazy, but whenever I think of like cults and stuff like Jim Jones and all that, first thing come to mind, oh, damn, none but white people that did all that. Ain't no black person going to sit there and drink no Kool-Aid behind some man, no white man sitting up saying something, telling you to drink Kool-Aid and die. I used to always say that in my head, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 The buddy that was in Waco. I used to always say that. But the D-Hive, as they call them, the people that follow Darius cooks has changed my whole thought process process and perspective on that. I have never seen a bunch of black people and and I'm not going to say black people, a bunch of black women who are obsessed. And some of these women want to have relations with this gay man. And he tells them they're gay. He's gay. That will obsess over him no matter what he says to some people that have bought products to him, that follow him, how nasty and rude and demeaning he talks to them on live. They will back him at all costs, no matter what. It is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anything like this before. They will. I mean, he will lay down, lay his big ass on the bed and somebody will ask, hey, Darius, I've been trying to get in contact with you about an order. I haven't heard anything. What's your order number? See, you coming for me. And, you know, he does all those theatrics, you know, that's unnecessary. And he'll talk down. He'll demean and be nasty. And these women 
will back him no matter what. It is disgusting. He don't never come for no man like that. Not no heterosexual man. Because he know we ain't trying, we're not doing all that shit. You may get popped, literally. Okay? Don't do it. Even even in my exchanges with him, he never was ever tried to get disrespectful with me. You know what I'm saying? But he's been doing he's been going around doing these tastings and you know going to these different restaurants and a lot of people don't want him in a restaurant Mm -hmm. there's been cases where people have come up you know they don't want him in there's been people that have accepted and like that he's in there and they feel like he's growing their business well Hmm. he's been he, he he he's still doing a dining with darius and the last night there was a young lady. She has a business in uh, with her husband in St. Louis. He's in St. Louis, Missouri. And she went on live while she was at dining with Darius. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of times when people go on live, you know, if they have an agenda or something, you can tell that they have an agenda, right? The thing that got me with this young lady is she actually showed the food. Now, we've seen the food through pictures. You cannot tell me. I don't care how much of a fan you are of him. If you're in your right mind, you cannot tell me that what he serves is worth $300 or more. That's what he charges. She showed the food. The, 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 the pieces of food that she showed were undercooked, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if this last part was theatrics or not, but she got up, went outside, and threw up three times. That could have been theatrics or whatever. Not sure. But she said she was sick. She said that the food wasn't good and all this other stuff. Incoming all these crazy. Oh, Lord. Crazy. And I'm going to say something else. And y'all may not like it. Overweight black women. Durant. Running to his ra- rescue. Yes. Deranged. They done attacked this lady's business. They done drove her ratings down. Her and her husband. They, they've done everything possible just because this lady showed undone chicken. And sour overcooked shrimp. shrimp. And what? Sour shrimp. Yeah. It is. Cra- and so what I have to say is not so much on Darius because you can sit down and do whatever you want. It's more about the people that follow him. You ladies need help. Mm. Y'all need help. I've, I, I promise you, I did not think black people could act like this. And they uphold all of his foolishness. Even when he does something in plain sight, he got on Facebook made a text about he was paying a contractor to build him a home because, you know, he got ran out of Georgia. So he, he's building a home in Texas. He wanted a receipt for everything that was purchased. The lady said, the lady told him on the post, I've sent you receipts. I've sent you three receipts. Plus, I sent you a spreadsheet that wasn't good for him. So he wanted to cancel it. He made a big deal, big post about it. Now, this lady, she's been on the Fixer Upper show or something like that. World renowned. One gentleman came on his post who said, listen, I've known you, Darius, since kindergarten. And I've known this lady for eight years. I can tell you this much. This lady don't work and do business like this. And I've worked with her. Mm-hmm. That was telling to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And one person got on the post and said, Darius, does anybody at, are you able to provide anybody to itemize receipt of every single thing you buy? So I know where my $389 is going to. Whoa. You don't do stuff like that. And that's not apparently that's not how contractors and all those things work. I don't know how it worked, but I was just reading up on it. That's, you know, it's crazy that you're going to give a person. I'm not asking nobody for a receipt. When people did work on my house, I didn't ask them for a receipt. I knew what I bought, but I didn't ask for let me. Let me how much did the nails cost? How much? did the, You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So. Stuff like that, you know, that happened. And then. Today, he made a post. Well, I'm sorry. He went on Larry Reed Live 
who made a post about Leandria Johnson. She's a gospel singer. She got baptized. Mm-hmm. Darius went on there and said they couldn't find no other vessel because they were. She got she got baptized in a small tin. If you if you grew up in the South back in the day, sometimes you got baptized in those little small tin bathtubs. That's what she got baptized in again. So Larry Reed said Darius Cooks to their defense is pretty standard for small churches who can't drop the hundred thousand plus for install. Mm-hmm. Well, Le- God ain't done with Leandria yet. She came on there. She said at Darius Cooks, really? Nigga, you in hot water, not me. How about we talk face to face? I know that's right. Then she said at Larry Reed Live, install nobody's defense, bro. No one would have ever knew about this if at Rob Hatcher would have never asked to post this. I'm good though. But Darius Crooks, I got his fat ass. I know that's right. This is why I love Leandria. Listen. Because let me tell you something. I got some good God in me. Understand that I have a a decent, solid relationship with God. And I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But honey, when you come for me when I don't sin for you. (laughs) When you come for me when I did not sin for you, you're going to get that pre-Jesus, Stephanie. Yes. And I'm not sorry about it. Yeah. And see, the one thing about Darius, he sits there and he does that something about something within that man is so broken that he feels the need to try and break everybody else. And then you have these women, black women, I'm calling y'all out, that sit there and defend him and fight for him to the detriment of other black women. Where it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. Where's, black- where's the protect black women thing? Put that asterisk there. I, I've been telling you that since I joined the show. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen, Steph, how they come to this man's defense time after time when he goes in there. He ta- not only talks bad about people, but he would talk bad to one of them, mm-hmm. a follower. And they laugh and they, and they it. think it's, it's funny. So cool. I've he, lost so much respect for. There's a comedian that I will fo- I was following, mm-hmm. and I lost so much respect for him because he he participated in the foolishness. Foolishness. He's a gospel comedian. Oh. Um, Will Johnson. Okay. And I think he a download queen too. Um, well, Darius ain't download, but you participate you know you you're seeing these things and even larry reed live going to talk about he's a good person when have you seen this man be a good person to people like seriously seriously there is no i've never and and i've been following darius for a long time i've purchased products from him some of them have come damaged some haven't come at all Hmm. and some have come fine which were the two books i got for me and my mom years ago Mm -hmm. This guy has never shown any type of good intentions that I've seen. Now, in the, I'm sorry, let me take that back. In the very beginning, before he started growing, he was showing that he had good intentions. Now, little did I know, reading up about him, he had all these things that happened previously mm-hmm. that he did. But he didn't show he wasn't he didn't show the real Darius until his following started growing. And it's become disgusting. Because let me tell you something. You disrespect me, you're going to catch one of them sour chicken plates to the face. Man, look here. That's what I'm saying. Like, he knows. All the tables over. He knows who to try with that stuff. Mm -hmm. And. Because I mean, Stephanie is sweet. I'm speaking to myself in third person. I'm as sweet as can be. But honey, honey, when you try me and I see red, I can't be held liable for what happens after. Hello. You get exactly what you asked for when you play in my face. That's right. And he's so, you know, and and again, that's what I say. I go back to the women. I can't even fault him. Although, you know, him going around to these restaurants, telling people what they need to do and what they don't need to do better. You've, you've had three, you've had more than three, but you had three bad failed restaurants. They couldn't pass health inspections. You had to shut them down. Um, Your food literally looks like slop. And we have, um, photographic uh, images 
to back us up on that. That would be just like me sitting down on the couch and giving advice to other fat people and telling them how they should lose weight. Who the hell am I? And I'm fat myself. You you get what I'm saying? Like, you have no right doing that. And, and it's with malicious intent. And you women that fantasize about this man who's never going to look your way. Let me tell you something. I have never, ever, ever had a sexual thought about a gay man. Mm-hmm. I don't get that. They know he's gay. Yep. They know he is after the same thing that they have, and they're literally throwing themselves throwing. at this man. Like, how desperate can one be? So, this is a deeper conversation, and maybe I should have had someone on here that can explain it. That is from the LGBTQ community, but I've always wondered, right, when a person does not want to come out the first thing. Well, when a man doesn't want to come out, the first thing you see that he dates or marry is an overweight woman, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the lack of self-esteem from the woman? Okay. I can answer that for you. You don't have to ask nobody from the community. I'm going to answer that. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because she, they bank on, the woman just being feeling so low about herself that she's not even going to question his sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sad. It's sickening. I'm more, I'm more upset at how they attack other black women for him. Cause he don't even do the attacking. He let y'all fall right for it. He gets there. He says what he needs to say. He immediately made after that lady made that video he immediately made a video and they went on the attack. Yep. It is crazy. And I get it. Some people, you don't, you don't pay your money. So I guess you're going to get the most out of it, but there's no way in hell after seeing what has been served over the years, not just one or two videos over the years, there's no way in hell. I'm going to sit there. And there's some people that, that follow him and like everything that will sit there and cut up over a McDonald's burger, but I could tell you this, I eat 20 McDonald's burgers before I eat what he's serving. Honey, Darius can't even fix me a glass of water. No. It's just <laughs> crazy. It's no. crazy. So, you know, um, anyways, it's just, you know, I've seen him do these things. He's following behind, you know, what he's seeing Keith Lee, and it's not gaining the same traction because, again, malicious intent, so negative and you know nobody's going to follow behind anyone like that you know except for people that are deranged and really have some mental issues and i'm not trying to make light of anybody that has mental issues but there's something missing there for you to sit there and support someone that are doing these things but then on the flip side of that you're the first one crying about protect black women it doesn't make sense to me. It never will make sense to me. None at all. Uh, so enough with that. Listen, I know we're not doing a top 10 this week, Steph, but I came across a photo and I wanted to, to tell you about it. And it said, what three albums are you recommending from 1997? I'm going to name the albums that are here in this picture. And you tell me which three you would pick. Mm-hmm. They got Mace, Harlem World. Bone Thugs and Harmony, The Art of War, Three Six Mafia, Chapter Two, World Domination, Wyclef John, uh, I forgot what the name of that album is, KRS One, I Got Next, EPMD, Back in Business, Scarface, The Untouchable, Puff Daddy and the Family, No Way Out, Camp Low, Uptown Saturday Night, Super Duper Fly, Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes, which one was this? Uh, oh, When Disaster Strikes. Jay Z volume one, one. Notorious B.I.G. Life After Death, Wu Tang Forever, Capone and Noriega, The War Report, and Common. Which three? Missy Camp Low and Busta. Woo, okay. 
Because those were the three out of all you named. Those were the three I played the most. Okay. So that's what I'm going to have to go off of. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Art of War, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Life After Death. And man, that last one is hard because Harlem World and No Way Out, I played damn near the same. Mm -hmm. That is tough. Harlem World, too, because I played Harlem World a lot, but I played Camp Low more. I only liked about three tracks off of Camp Low, so it was more less of me just playing the three tracks. Mm. Man, it's between Mason and, and No Way Out, and I'm leaning towards no way out but mace had that dmx feature on there yes he did 24 hours to live baby yeah. um that's he of, did that's one of dmx's coldest like tracks i like yeah that. and, but I, and the I mean, only thing damn. that would kill it for me is i was so in love with harlem world and he had that mm. pedophile song on that album oh yeah was that the one with monique yeah i growing up like when i was listening to that that record at 17 i love that little song even though at 17 i was a little virgin you know what i'm saying i went i used to love that song because i was like oh you know it's an older man he interested child when i got one day i just happened to be in a car and it popped up on apple music this is a few years ago i was like 37 38 at the time uh-huh. and i was listening i said oh my god this Pedophiles. <laughs> well, think about it. Listen, think about Keith Sweat. Uh, you may be young, but you're ready. There are so many songs I listen to now that are so problematic for me. What about and, uh? My God, music made a music titled the song Seventeen on his mm-hmm. first album. Remember that? Hmm. Wow. So I, there are so many songs I listen to for men and women that were just so problematic for me. And I'm like, oh, y'all all was some pedophiles out here. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's a lot of songs. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Ask Us Anything. <laughs> I know that usually we do this with everybody here, but because it's just Steph and I, there are two questions on here that are directed directly at Steph and myself. So the first question I'm going to answer for myself is this, Keith, how do you stay happily married? And I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, we happily married, right? First of all, as I said before, and I've said this a long time, man, Kobe and Dalek being loud. You have to really be in love with the person that you want to marry. It it it's just the I love you. Yeah, you love, you know, you love your friends, you love people, but you gotta be in love with someone. So, you know, I think that being in love with someone and sorry y'all about my dogs in the background. They just they the garage is door right there and my wife done pulled up from work, so they 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 acting crazy. You have to be in love with someone and you have to, you know, grow together and we operate as one. And we operate as one. So I think that's how we stay happy in our marriage because we're truly in love with each other. So that's what I, I would say for me. For you, Steph, have you ever broke character at your job and your emotions got the best of you and you felt so, so sorry for a family right in front of them? No. That's not well, damn. Know. No. Mm-mm. Because that's when they will take advantage of you. Um, And I learned that the hard way through somebody else, if that kind of makes sense. Like I... Um, you know, one Can you care thing to expound about, on that? Um, when I worked for Child Protective Services, there was this um this this woman, she was trying to get her daughter back, and she was actually it was my case. And so I had a coworker, this woman gave a sob story about her light bill and all this good stuff. And I came in on the tail end of the conversation. Had I come in on the beginning of the conversation, this would have never happened. 
So the coworker, I come to find out the coworker gave her the money to pay the light bill. Cause she's like, I don't have any lights and I'm going to court to get my child back in two days. I said, you sitting here, you're crying. You feel sorry for this woman. So you give her money to pay a light bill, not knowing she just gave this child who's in foster care right now because of really it was the child's fault. She was in foster care. The mama really didn't do anything. I said, she just gave this 15 year old child $230 for some sneakers. But had you not snuck and had this conversation with this family behind my back, you wouldn't have given her the money. Like, you know, right. and, and that person um, ended up getting in some trouble behind that. But um, no, I, that's one thing I don't do. Um, I maintain strict professional boundaries. If I feel the need to get emotional or cry, I go to my car. Okay, cool, cool. And I know, I remember you saying before, man, you've kind of like walked over dead bodies or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, how do you deal with that? You just keep it moving. Is it, has there ever been someone that you really had like a a uh, connection with and they died unexpectedly? Yeah. And that was another thing when I really had to, you know, somebody I I really struggled with her. And this was back in like 2012, um, really struggled with her and trying to help her get off drugs, get to rehab. And, you know, it just didn't. She She just didn't. It it was, you know, and that was extremely hard for me. And that was at the moment when I was like, I got to man up if I'm going to remain in this line of work because my, I don't want my emotions to get the best of me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did what I had to do. And I mean, I'm not going to say it doesn't phase me. I have my moments when I'm home or alone or something like that. And I've kind of, well, not kind of, I've gotten to the point where I now know how to recharge and get myself together and not let it affect me health wise or or let it toy with my mental health. I have an amazing therapist, but yeah, self-care is very, very important. So that's good. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Steph. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about when you see the, and I may pronounce her name wrong because I've never really heard anybody say her name, Sukahana, a Suki yeah. Hunt. How yeah. do you feel about that type of portrayal of black women in the media. It's and I, well, let me say this. I ask that because <sighs> I get it, right? There's some comments that have been made about, for instance, the latest song by Cardi B and Meg The Stallion. Mm-hmm. That that's all that's being shown is sex, 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 sex. Mm-hmm. To a point, I, I mean, I won't say to a point, I agree. As I've stated before, no matter the gender, all the music is trash now. Mm-hmm. And it seems like there was more variety. Well, there, well, not it seems like there was more variety when it came to female MCs back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, where you had some that rapped about sex, you know, you had Foxy Brown, little Kim, although they could just spit hard as well. It just wasn't about sex or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Trina, you know, sex, but you had your Eves, you had your Mia exes, you had, you know, um, Queen Latif, all these people. We talked about this about, you know, with the hip hop celebrating the women and everything like that. But when you see the songs that are, coming out Mm -hmm. and it's almost like the same thing and then you see the Sukahanas getting on TV like she was on the MTV red carpet and we've seen some stuff you know listen Lil Kim came with a titty out in one you know you know we've seen stuff from people but when the 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 crawling on the carpet and vibrating on the carpet and all this other stuff as a black woman when you see this, do you feel empowerment or do you have a problem with it? I have a problem with it personally. And I say that because, yeah, you had, um, you know, I'm going to use Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown um, as examples because you can buy a Lil' Kim album, right? 
Mm-hmm. And people may say, you know, oh, it's, it's all sexual, this, this, that, and the third. And maybe those singles you listen to were were sexual. But you're going to get that little Kim album and you're going to hear tracks like Lil Drummer Boy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And it's not mm-hmm. a sexual thing. Like Kim, Kim is spitting. You understand? Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. going to get a Foxy Brown album and you, you know, you may hear the singles and oh, it's so sexual, but you're gonna get um, you know, you're gonna get tracks like Let Me Think, Let Me Think, China White or I Can't that aren't mm-hmm. sexual with like she's really, really spitting. Mm-hmm. So I listen to when when these women come out with albums, right? Mm-hmm. I I Try to give it a a listen to be fair because I don't want to automatically just be turned off by what I see on TV or social media or anything like that because it could be something of substance on the album, mm-hmm. um, which you get from a Cardi or a Meg. You know what I'm saying? Like there mm-hmm. there are good things on these albums, but we never know that because we're always looking at your ass. Now this is my thing. I am. I am supportive of a woman that chooses to be sexually free. Mm-hmm. But there's a difference between being sexually free and me always seeing your naked body. Mm-hmm. For me, that takes away from their talent. Like, I'm going to give you a great example. I started becoming a fan of uh, Chloe and Halle Bailey when they dropped their album, The Kids Are All Right. And then they mm-hmm. ended up as actresses on the show Grownish. Mm-hmm. When I heard that they were branching off and doing their own solo things, I was super excited for those girls because they're so talented. I mean, they can sing. They sound really good. They're beautiful. They're backed by Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I haven't listened to anything that Chloe has put out, not even her first album. I listened to the first album once because I'm tired of looking at her naked ass. Mm. For me, because I have to sit there and look at your booty and boobs and stuff all the time, I'm no longer interested in what you have to say as a woman because I feel like you're trying to make sex sell everything. And and don't get it twisted. Sex is a business. But black women, why does it always have to be that our business has to be what it, our sexual business has to be what it is? Mm-hmm. Why? Um. Right. You know, I, it's embarrassing. It's a little hurtful. It's because, like I said, these women have so much talent. People can say what they want to say about her. I just feel like Cardi B is a talented lyricist. But we don't get to know that because we're always seeing her tongue. Mm-hmm. We're always seeing her her body. We're all, She's mm-hmm. always, you know, it's... So my thing is, and, and two, I can't help but think sometimes when I see these women, I'm like, I know they stink because they body parts always out. Mm-hmm. But um, and that's mm-hmm. so crazy. I know that's crazy to think like that. And I know black women are gonna attack me for this. So I don't care. But it's like, why does everything has to have to be about being a sex symbol? Right. And that's why I feel that's part of the reason these men are out here, um, not respecting them as lyricists and always trying to pin ghost writers on them and doing this stuff like that because you, it, it presents as I have nothing. To show for anything but ass and boobs. So right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm with you. I just want to get your perspective on that because you see it a lot. And for me as a black man, I get immediately embarrassed. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, to see those things, but it just seems like it's not going anywhere. So it's I just get want to get your perspective. Before it gets better. So yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah, well. Before we get out of here, even though Dwayne and John are not on, we're still going to keep the spirit of the sports alive here. So we're going to jump into sports <laughs> a little bit here. Um, we're going to give, we're going to talk about real quick here last week, what our predictions were and who got what right. We're going to start off with the NFL. And so there were three games that we did cover. The Ravens at the Bengals was the first game. John, Dwayne, and myself pick the Ravens, and Steph pick the Bengals. Mm. 27 to 24, the Ravens pulled off the win with the Bengals. I actually watched that whole game 
And okay. uh, I will say this. I, I was sitting with my uncle watching the game, and, and, I'll, and I'll continue to say this. Lamar Jackson, if he doesn't find another way to play, and I probably said this last week too, his time may be limited. And I say because he's not sliding. And these ends and these tackles and these linebackers that come off the edge, they all are almost are just as fast as he is. Because it's like that Michael Stick, uh, Michael Stick, Michael Vick style of play yeah. isn't working for him. Um, no. ain't, nobody, ain't nobody 300 pounds on the line barely anymore. When Vic was playing, you know, he ain't had to worry about that. Right. So it was a good game. Um, Bengals had an opportunity to win. Some stupid penalties at the end. But um, the Ravens came out with the dub. So that's... One point apiece for the three of us and Steph starting off 0-1-1. Hey. <laughs> Next game was the Jets at the Cowboys. I did not check this game out. Um, we had Steph, Steph picking the Jets mm-hmm. with John Dwayne and myself picking the Cowboys. And 30-10, to 10, Cowboys took the dub. That Prescott threw for 255 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, did you watch this game, Steph? Just a little bit of it. And, and what can we say about them Cowboys? Are they are they for real this year? We'll see come December. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I think this happened after we recorded last week's episode. Aaron Rodgers, who signed the deal with the Jets, leaving the Green Bay Packers, he went down. Mm-hmm. Tearing his Achilles tendon the first quarter of the game. So that – season is going down the drain although they did they did pick up the win last week against the bills mm-hmm. um but had this been a sunday night game and aaron was healthy and playing the cowboys would not have won that game you're right you're right you're absolutely right the third game was the packers at the falcons Dwayne was the lone wolf picking the packers <laughs> well you john and myself picked the falcons and the falcons pulled it out. That was a really good pause. Game. Jordan Love. Pause. Amazing. I, I heard your pause. Uh huh. Jordan, Jordan Love. Amazing. He played a really good game. So who's this quarterback uh, for the 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 Falcons? I Litter. let me tell you something. Falcons fans are sticking by this man, and he is trash. I feel so sorry for Taylor wow Heineke because Taylor Heineke to me. Mm-hmm. Excuse me speaking. He's a decent quarterback, and he gets overlooked for mediocrity all the time. Like, he's the orphan of the NFL. Washington didn't want him. Wow. Um, Atlanta doesn't want him. It's like, why don't you want me, man? Like, he's he's wow. Will. He's the Will Smith, the you know, of the NFL. Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> so, so far for the season, John and I are undefeated. Mm-mm. 3-0. Steph, you are one and two, and Dwayne is two and one. So Dwayne, although he's not here, he did have the games pick for next week. So we're just gonna go ahead and give our predictions. Next week we've got the Eagles at the Buccaneers. You already know. <laughs> The Eagles will be playing in Tampa. Uh, <laughs> it is a Monday night game. The line is Philly five and a half. Dwayne is going with the Bucks. Of course, of course. He is. poor baby. Steph has already said we already know. So she's going <laughs> with her Eagles. Uh, big timer. He's going with the Eagles. Come through, John. I'm going to go with the Bucks. Of course you are. I'm not surprised. <laughs> you know what? You do that because every time you bet against my Eagles, they shine. Every time you did it last season, they came through and they shine. So go ahead. Bet on my bet against them. We appreciate Listen, you. the Eagles are playing well, but so are the Bucks. 
And I think this is going to continue for the Bucks. And I just think they're going to pull this one off. So Dwayne and I with the Bucks, Steph and Big Timer with the Eagles. Next game. <laughs> Next game. We've got the Chargers versus the Vikings. Oh, no. So we've got we've got 0 and 2 Chargers at the 0 and 2 Vikings. Um Kirk Cousins is not having a bad season. He's already got 708 yards, six touchdowns, and one interception. Um, but they are the Vikings. The line is even for this game. Dwayne is going <laughs> Loser, Dwayne put loser leaves home. What? Du, Dwayne is taking the Chargers. Okay. I'm going to take the Vikings. Okay. Steph, who are you taking in this? I'm going with Minnesota. All right. Big Time is taking the Chargers. Isn't the game in Minnesota? It is. And just one o'clock. Is healthy. Yep. But they're gonna take the charges. Have they not yeah. seen the charges play so far this season? Because they can't get it together for pay. Well, okay. Minnesota can't get it together either. Now they can't, but they they look a whole lot better than the charges do. They do, they do, they do. Uh, <laughs> the last game is those Colts uh-huh. at the Ravens. Well, they lost uh, their quarterback and still won the other day. They did. They're one and one. Ravens are two and oh. Seven and a half line for Baltimore. Uh Dwayne's going with the Ravens. Who are you going with, Steph? Baltimore. It's gonna be a clean sweep all around. All of us are picking Baltimore. Okay. So we'll see how that game that is a one o'clock game as well. We're gonna turn it over to college here. We've had some college updates. Uh, I did, of course, once again, come through with my upset of the week. I picked the Gators over. Uh, who was it over? And I forgot already that quick. Tennessee. The Gators, Florida Gators end up beating Tennessee. Tennessee was ranked number 11, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they were playing in the swamp. And they pulled it off. And then there was a full out brawl after the game. (laughs) So (laughs) that was that. Number three, Florida State barely, barely, barely got past Boston College. Uh, John was on pins and needles. Uh, They're still ranked number three. I don't know what the hell's going on with Alabama. Alabama. They beat rank number 10. They beat South Florida, University of South Florida, 17 to three. But it didn't look like they were going to win that game at all until like the fourth quarter, third quarter. Is this the end of Nick Saban? I I don't know. It it may be. It may be Um, because of everything that we discussed last week with the NILs and the transfer portals and the Deion Sanders and everything happening. He doesn't have an iron grip on uh, recruiting. Mm -hmm. And so not saying that he's not a great coach because he's proven that he's a good coach. But Mm -hmm. when you're not able to get the top recruits, Mm -hmm. you know, it may be a little bit of a longer process for you to get to where you used to be. And he has somewhat of a quarterback controversy as he's non-committable, non-committed to the coach. naming a number one quarterback. He's not committing to naming one. So they are like, I don't know. I'm just, but this matchup against Ole Miss is going to be good this weekend. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. Looking forward to it. I think, you know, I'm looking forward to all of these games. The good games are coming on early. Mm-hmm. Um, but Florida state is going to absolutely kill us at home. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm, my focus is is the Colorado Oregon game and then uh, Alabama Ole Miss. All right, um, there was an upset outside of the Florida Tennessee game. Florida taking that win over Tennessee twenty nine sixteen. There was Missouri, uh, Missouri, however you want to pronounce it, upsetting number fifteen ranked Kansas State thirty to twenty seven. 
mm-hmm. and the big game that everybody was talking about, Colorado State played Colorado in two overtimes. Colorado pulled out the win, 43 to 35. There was a lot of penalties against Colorado State. Um, a lot of late hits, intentional hits. Travis Hunter, he got knocked out of the game. It was reported earlier today by Skip Bayless that uh, he suffered a lacerated liver. Mm -hmm. and he will be out probably for the next three games, three to four games. Yeah. Um, Intentional hits, I think there should be some type of punishment to lay down. What were your thoughts? I I did not watch the game, actually. Um, Did you watch the game, Steph? I did. And? Um, They came out there not to play a game, but to fight. Both teams. Mm-hmm. Both teams came out to fight. Let's just be mm-hmm. honest. Yep. Um, while I understand, my thoughts aren't really in line with everybody else's because everybody was so pumped up. You know, we have to remember that these are still kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted both teams to really calm down and play with some poise. And both coaches actually said that about their boys. That they told them they wanted to play with some poise. I know people disagree with me when I say that oftentimes humility can be your friend. Yep. Um, I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I really, because I want these boys to succeed. And when Mm -hmm. I say these boys, I mean Colorado. Mm -hmm. I want them to have a successful season so they can prove the naysayers wrong. But I want them to be humble about it. Um, yeah, That's going to be hard to do with who the yeah, head coach is. Be hard, yeah, talk your trash. Do this, do that. But every time somebody did something dirty, then you want to jump up. You wanna, And I get that's the temper in football sometimes. But right. that's what they wanted them to do. That's what they wanted them to do. And, the, <laughs> and, the, and, and what made me angry, what made me so angry with Colorado State. Mm-hmm is they went on the field to fight and play dirty and they still lost. Like, yeah. you play dirty and you still lost. And I had an aha, that's what if you get moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, because that hit on Travis Hunter, even though that's something we see all the time, mm-hmm. um, that was the a, intent behind it. I, I, I don't want to say what my first thought was when he hit, when he hit Travis Hunter, because we might get canceled. Yeah. But um, I was like, that was a big cracker. Yeah. Um yeah. but he um that was that was so intentional and I don't like when a game that's supposed to be fun for these kids turns out to be a battle. It turns out to be a war. Mm-hmm. Um which is exactly what that was. Now I'm gonna tell you what else bothered me about that game too. Mm. Colorado State's head coach sat there and watched his players playing dirty and he had a smirk on his face the whole time. Mm-hmm. He was because one of my friends, I was talking to him, and he was like, "No, nah, he just looked like that." No, nah, that man is smirk. I know what a smirk looks like on somebody's face because I do it a lot. Mm-hmm. I know what I know what it's like when somebody smirk, and that's what he was doing. It's almost like he was proud of his boys playing dirty. Absolutely, and, like and he thought he was going to take the win with it. But it's, let me tell you something. Colorado came back like New England did on the Falcons, and oh they man. won that game. Sorry, Rock. Listen, this is the house nigga, field nigga mentality, right? Mm-hmm. The coach, he thinks he's in the house because he don't look black. He mm-hmm. could pass for white. And here come this field nigga being loud and bashful. That's how everybody feel in America pretty much. But... Mm-hmm. It didn't work out that way. Shadour Sanders, he played another great game, 348 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. They are not going – I don't believe they're going to have the same success next week, especially with Travis Hunter out. Uh, But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But they played a game. They showed perseverance, and they came back, and uh, they got the dub. Two overtimes, but they got it. So Mm – I think that, you know, it was the comments by the 
coach and everything that was going on. And, you know, I, I believe that that's what caused the tensions to rise even more. Mm -hmm. And these teams are going out there. These coaches are talking these teams up because they do not like Deion Sanders coming in and showing them up. They don't. And so they're going out there to intentionally hurt, beat, and punish Colorado. Mm -hmm. So that's what I feel is happening. But, you know, glad that they got the win. The next week I will give my Upset specials, and there's a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I feel what like about this, this, yeah, this weekend. What that's what I'm about to do right now for next weekend. Week. This coming weekend. Last week, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Next week, I'm sorry. There's a few. I've got Clemson with the upset over Florida State. <laughs> oh, oh, that's my wow. school, isn't it? It is. Well, I'm wearing orange all week. I have an orange today. UCLA is going to beat Utah. Ole Miss is going to beat Alabama. Of course they are. Arkansas is going to put, no, never mind. They're playing what LSU at night. I was about to say Arkansas was going to pull up, set over LSU, but they're playing. Have you, have you been watching LSU play this season? I have. They're playing you know, okay. You, you called an Arkansas upset last year over some, oh, South Carolina, and they right. did win. Yeah, but they're not beating, they're not going to Baton Rouge at 7 o'clock at night beating LSU. That's not happening. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. And the last upset that I have to call is I'm taking Pittsburgh over North Carolina. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Is North Carolina's ranked number 17. Yes, it is. Is it at night? Uh, Let's see. I believe. Yes, it's at 8 p.m. Oh, yeah. They're going to beat them. They're, they're taking that. They're taking that one. Um. So yeah, that's that's what's going on in the world of sports. One thing, and, and I just saw this. There's an article, and I, and I know we'll have more on it as the weeks come. But NFL star Sergio Brown, he's still missing. He was found missing, and his mom was missing. And then today, they found the mom dead in a creek near the family home, and he's still missing. So, um, it's a crazy story. We don't know what's going on. Uh, but we will come back to that as we gather more information and more things get released. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, and Dwayne sent this to me as well, Michigan State, who's off to a horrible start, they're in the process of firing Coach Mel Tucker. I don't have to tell you what Mel Tucker's ethnicity is to know that he ain't getting a chance, but there's been other things that have happened to him. Um, a body of undisputed evidence of misconduct mm -hmm. that warrants termination. He's been suspended without pay after sexual harassment allegations emerged in media reports last weekend. An independent investigator hired by the school has been examining the allegations since January and Tucker's suspension came after the specific allegations arose in media reports. So a uh, prominent sexual assault awareness speaker, Brenda Tracy, filed a sexual misconduct complaint against Tucker in December of 2022. She claims that Tucker made unwelcome advances after she was hired to speak to the Spartans football team about sexual misconduct and her experience as a rape survivor. What? She but said she the gifts from him. She said Tucker also masturbated without her consent during a phone call. <laughs> I didn't know you need, listen, I'm not trying to make light of this. I'm not. I didn't know you needed somebody's consent to, to masturbate on the phone. Um, that there you can hang up on, even though that is harassment, but mm -hmm. I didn't know you needed consent. Uh, yeah, we talked about this a little bit. He He's out of there. And mm -hmm. like you said, you know, when you accept gifts from someone that's harassing you or you feel like they're being inappropriate, why do you accept them? And then want to turn them over. Like, immediately report them. Don't take the gifts, no matter how lavish it is. Right. If, if you feel harassed and, you know, these things are happening, man, turn their ass in. Yeah. Sorry about that. I clicked on that Larry Reed live clip. No, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I... I 
I just will say that you guys, you know, it's nothing funny about sexual assault at all. But you need to be, if you're going to accuse someone of sexual assault, then you need to stay in my in my mind consistent with it. Not I'm going to accept gifts and then if you're you know, because what it reads off sometimes when things like this happen is I accepted a gift. He didn't give me what I wanted. So now I'm going to scream sexual assault. That's what it reads, Absolutely. right? I'm not saying that's what it is. That's what it reads. I'm with you. So yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. That is our sports update for the day. I don't think I missed anything. That did I still? You did. Okay. We've come to the end of the show. <laughs> now it's time to say goodbye to all my Negro friends. <laughs> I'm <singing> the real song. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you guys again for supporting us. Continue to download us. Um, you know, do everything that you need to do to support, share, other than going on somebody's post or a, a celebratory post of that person and, and sharing our podcast information. Don't do that if you're supporting the Short Desk Podcast. Okay. Um, but continue to share with your friends and family. Have them download, support us. Um, we we just really appreciate. We're getting listens from all over the world, as mm-hmm. you heard today. Uh, the city that we celebrated was uh, Spain, Spanish town, Spanish town, Jamaica, Jamaica. So mm-hmm. people are listening to us all over and we just thank you. Thank you. We're forever grateful for this. Steph, can you tell everybody what your song of the week is? My song of the week is the ghetto D a ghetto uh, by Jeezy featuring E 40. Wow, you have been on your Jeezy kick, I know. Yeah, I've been listening to Jeezy since Friday, since wow. I heard about that divorce, honey. Wow. Because I was boycotting his music. Really? So you would have boycotted the man? Yes, because you're going to sit there and marry somebody that basically said she likes her dark meat on the side. Do you think he knew that? Yeah, he knew that. You think so? I don't think he was sitting there watching the talk. I mean, the real. I, I'm pretty sure someone showed him that clip. Okay. I'm pretty All sure. Right. I'm willing to All bet right. my check he knew about that. He right. married yeah. right anyway because she probably explained it away somehow. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, hey, I believe you. Um, my song of the week is Allure by Jay Z. What? That's one of my favorite Jay Z tracks. Yeah. You see, I posted on Facebook a lot. Oh, really? I never see it. We ain't doing no end of the thing because that's John's thing. So we'll be back next week. Like I said, we'll be back in some type of capacity. Um, A lot of things, a lot of moving things, but we're going to be back. We'll be back with the uh, top 10, the movie review, and all the other crazy things that are happening. Steph, this was fun. It was. I was like, huh? You know, it's just gonna be you and I today. That's that's the first time. Like, for me, I've never, been, I haven't done this show with just being two people since, you know, before right before we transitioned to you being on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, John and I did that. So, oh my God, Lord, help me! <laughs> Thank you guys again. <laughs> we are. The Short Disc Podcast. Holla at your boy and your girl.